afternoon, South Africa. Welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Mooley. And you, I'm Jeannie D. You look exquisite. No, I'm actually your biggest fan today. Those shoes. <laughs> you are very lucky that you are one size bigger than me in shoes because otherwise know, those would definitely go missing. She tried them on and they were like Bigfoot on her. So oh I was God. so glad. I was like, yes, they don't fit her. <laughs> Pretty bleak. Well, July is Mental Illness Awareness Month in South Africa. Yeah. And today we'll be chatting about depression and anxiety. And it's still quite stigmatized in South Africa. And some at times it's taken not seriously at all. I know, it's and completely misunderstood. Yeah, exactly. And we've invited a representative from SADAC to come unpack the issue with us. We're also going to be chatting to an incredible young conceptual photographer and filmmaker. His name is Tsoku Mayela, and he actually put together the most amazing artistic series to try and debunk all of these myths, I suppose, on mental illness. Then, from one great talent to another, we are going to be chatting to the man that, in fact, made our gorgeous just kitchen here in the afternoon loft then also in afternoon express we're going to be having a look at a gorgeous home uh, with uh, together with private property then in the kitchen Clemenade, i've missed you you've been gone the entire week i know i hope you've had an amazing time i have missed you it wasn't holiday <laughs> <laughs> anyway he calls what he does work <laughs> i call it amazing cooking it is. and today you're actually going to be showing us how carbohydrates in fact make you happier I've been saying this for years. I missed that brief, but actually, <laughs> we're going to talk about some of the properties we're overlooking when it comes to carbohydrates and yeah. some of the food that we're cooking, because believe it or not, there's medicine in that goodness. Yeah, and food is medicine. I say it all the time. It is. Yeah. And besides the fact that all the medicine, it's actually just a, I'm going to say a bad word, a really good dish. <laughs> Don't say bad words on the show, Clem. Remember, everything that Clem makes and all of our other chefs that we have on this amazing show, you can find on afternoonexpress.co.za. All of the dishes are there, all of the recipes, all of the shopping lists, and I guarantee you they all work because I don't know how to cook without reading the Afternoon Express website. <laughs> but for now, though, Bonnie's on the couch with our very first guest. July is Mental Illness Awareness Month, and today we are focusing on the often misunderstood condition of depression. To shed some light on this, psychiat on this is psychiatrist Dr. Bavi Vitalingam, who is established the Women's Health Clinic at Huertiskiu Hospital and is recommended as the therapist by SADAC, the South African Depression and Anxiety Group. Welcome to the loft, Dr. Bavi. Thank you very Lovely much. to have you with us. It's great to be here. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Why is it important for South Africa to have a Depression Awareness Month or a Mental Illness Awareness Month? You know, mental illness is really common. Um, at least one in 10 people, as many as one in three people, will suffer from mental illness at some point in their life, particularly depression. But the general public still don't know enough about depression and mental illness, and there's also a huge stigma around it. Mm. So this month is great for us to create awareness and for people to understand that mental illness is an illness. It's not a yeah. character flaw or something right, that makes you weaker. Right, right, and it doesn't mean you're crazy. No, completely, yeah, completely. Yeah. Well, it's kind of between a rock and a hard place, right? Because you've got people completely stigmatizing people, stigmatizing it, and then there's people not taking it seriously. So what is the position we're in in South Africa? What, are, what is just the opinion out there about what depression is? You know, I think it varies from community to community and from people to people. I think that um, you have a segment of society that understands that depression is an illness, but there's still far too many people who think that depression is just normal sadness, it's something that you'll get over with, or it's some sort of weakness in your personality. And if you were just stronger or prayed harder or pulled yourself together that you would actually get better. Mm, mm, mm. And I mean, how do people distinguish between being depressed and, and having a, that uh, condition that needs treatment and just being sad because something happened or you just woke up on the wrong side of the bed? Well, you know, we have various different ways in which we diagnose depression, but the main thing that we look for is sadness, deep sadness or lack of interest, lack of pleasure that lasts most of the day, nearly every day, and is really causing interference with your functioning. Mm. Yeah. You know, so say, for example, you would be too sad or not have the energy to actually get up, get out of bed and do your job. That would be a worry and that would be something that we'd need to examine further. Right. And do you find that people are misdiagnosed around, around mental illness issues? You know, often there's misdiagnosis, and I think that can be in part because people um, don't come to the doctor and say, this is what's wrong with me. Often you have people who will come in repeatedly saying, I've got a headache, my stomach hurts, I've got aches and pains, mm. rather than saying actually what I am is feeling really, really depressed. 
Um, also, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people still don't understand depression, understand mental illness very well. I think we've come a long way. So if somebody does come in and say, I feel depressed, I feel sad, I'm not coping, then the diagnosis is made and made appropriately. But I think where we miss it is people who present with a lot of physical problems or people say who have physical illnesses like cancer or other severe physical illness. And then we may miss the fact that they're depressed in addition to the physical illness that they've right, got. Right, right. I mean, we're, we're very much a um, just get up and get on with it nation, you know, just cheer up, suck it up. Mm -hmm. um, there's people out there with, with bigger problems. Um, um, do you find that it's because maybe people feel like depression is, is not something that's, that's visible? If you're depressed, you, it's not like you're clutching your stomach and saying, uh, it's not a visible affliction. You know, that, that's a great explanation of it. it it's, it's not a visible affliction. It's not a broken leg. Um, one of my patients sent me a text saying that, you know, depression is a break in the brain, like a broken leg mm. is a break in the bone. The, the difference is that you don't see it on the outside. And also often because people with depression actually can put on the mask and go to work and continue and function, yeah. that you know, you don't see how much they're suffering or you don't see how much energy it takes to do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And is it hereditary? It's not hereditary in the sense that say your mum had depression, you will get depression. Right. But there is a genetic component, so it can run in families. Um, so we see that say if one parent has had depression, then their children are at a higher risk than the general public of getting depression. So it does cluster together in families, but it's not a specifically inherited thing. Right. And what is anxiety disorder and how is that linked to depression? Well, there are various different anxiety disorders, but the one thing that they have in common is anxiety that is inappropriate in the situation or anxiety that's interfering with your, your functioning. So um, it can be quite normal. Like now, I'm a little bit nervous being here. Right. Yeah. But if I You don't look nervous. You're doing absolutely fine. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if you're too anxious to do your job or you're too anxious to go out in public right. or too, you're getting panic attacks in the shopping and that's interfering with you, mm. that is an anxiety disorder. Mm -hmm. And there's a big overlap with anxiety disorders and depression. Yeah. About 60% of people with depression have anxiety disorders and, and vice versa. Wow. So we invited you to send us your comments and your questions um, around this depression and anxiety issue and Florina Lowe on Facebook said that I'm suffering from anxiety and I just would like to know if I'm gonna have to live with this for the rest of my life I've managed to control it without any medication but sometimes I just can't thank you so much for your question how would you answer that well I think it's a great question um, no, I don't think she has to live with it for the rest of her life. I think with a treatment, and treatment can be medication, or it can be psychotherapy, we can treat anxiety, we can make the disorder go away, and you can stay well, hopefully, for the rest of your life. Wow. You might need some form of ongoing treatment, but it's not to say that if you have an anxiety disorder that, that you are stuck with it. Yeah, yeah. How does SADAG support South Africans who are suffering from depression and anxiety? SADAG has lots of different ways in which they do it. So SADAG has a really great um, online page, www.sadag.org. Mm -hmm. SADAG also has a 24-hour helpline, which is 0800 121314, and various different um, helplines. But SADAG also runs support groups groups throughout the country. Oh, that's um, amazing. You know, for, for people who have depression, anxiety, and the support groups are great because they run for people with depression, but they run by people who've had depression, had anxiety. Oh. So you can provide support to each other. And if you go on the SADAG website or call them, they'll be able to link you with a group in your, in your area. Wow. wow, that's very insightful. Thank you so much for sharing with Pleasure. us and joining us today. So if you want any more information on how to contact the South African Depression and Anxiety Group, then head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. You can find everything you need there. Let's head over to Jeannie in the kitchen. Thanks, Bonnie. And remember, we love to hear from you. So communicate with us. All you need to do is tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the hashtag Afternoon Express or visit our Facebook page, which is Afternoon Express, or give us a call 083-913-3728 if you've got a, a story to share with us. After the break, we are chatting to the amazing conceptual photographer and artist Soko Mayela, and we get cooking in the kitchen. What are we making? Slow roasted lamb stew with beans and rice. Celery later. See you later. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> Well,
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Lovely to have you back with us. Clem, I've absolutely missed you. How have you been? I know. It's like, you've been away, I've been away. I know. Reunited. Just, right? We yeah. haven't cooked together in a while, and I've just, I know you're making something amazing today. And I knew it was going to be you in the kitchen, so it's a lamb dish. It's a, it's a lamb it's dish. It's a lamb dish. What? I love lamb. Okay. And yeah. also, it's happy food. Can it's happy food. why it's happy food? Right, exactly. When we talk about all those different, like, mm -hmm. benefits mm -hmm. of these foods, right? Okay. Besides being so good. So, India, I've got some stewing lamb, which is so underrated, which I think stewing lamb's got so much more flavor, like lamby flavor, than like all the other fancy cuts, like leg of lamb or lamb neck, or which is actually a stewing, stewing lamb. Stewing lamb, okay. And okay. it's really expensive. You get more meat for your ram. Doesn't it you know? take like really long to cook though? But you know what? All good things take time. Take, take time. There we go. <laughs> so lamb's also got CLA, as well as the beans that we're using later. They've got selenium. Selenium. Which are so amazing at combating stress. Good mood lifters as Absolutely. well, right? Absolutely. And the yeah. rice as well helps control your serotonin levels. Wow. Did we even like, you know? You, I love you because you've just made a dish that's so appropriate for our topic in the loft today, right? Absolutely. I okay, try. Cool. I try. So I'm slicing up some carrots and I'm doing it differently how I normally do it. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing it, I'm cutting it at an angle and then I'm just turning and cutting mm -hmm. again. Just creating some texture, some different shape in our vegetables. It'll make the kids happy as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. We're browning off our lamb. Make sure it gets a nice crust on there. That feels okay. like really golden brown on the outside. Mm -hmm. And we can hit it with our carrots. And I'm going to add the ends as well. I mean, it's going to cook so long, it's going to be amazingly soft right, and tender. Right. Have we seasoned it at all? Is it just... Not yet. We're just browning Not it as yet. is. Absolutely. Browning mm -hmm. as is. We're going to build on flavor. I like how you talk about seasoning because it's very important. A stew is not a stew without seasoning. Without so seasoning, it's very important. Right. More carrots go in, and then some onions. Can you pass that to me? Of course. And this is what the carrot, onion, and celery is what we call the mirepoix, which is like the holy vegetable trinity of any stew or soup. That's like where your flavor comes from. Uh huh. So again, because everything's going to be cooking so, for so long, everything's going in rough, Those right? Those are like the big three of, of stews and bolognese. You taught me this. It's so so true. now I always have them in my fridge. And you forget about that, you kind of like, you, you're gone. The dish is done. Start right. over, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. So you want to brown off your vegetables and again what that's going to do is bring out the natural sugar that's in there mm. and again that's flavor mm. so um tomato paste goes in right because that tomato paste can get a little bit bitter right absolutely and what i like doing with the tomato paste is because you want to thicken this up slightly i'm using some flour okay. i like cooking my tomato paste and flour together i find that sometimes when you use flour you end up getting a floury taste in your food Mm. You're right, you don't want that. But because we're using the tomato paste, somehow it binds with the flour and you don't get that floury taste. Oh, wow. And it intensifies... Intensify? Yeah, yeah. Intensify. <laughs> it intensifies that tomato <laughs> paste flavour. So you want to brown everything off really well and we're going to go with some herbs. It's all okay. about flavour, right? Okay. So okay. I'm going with some rosemary and some bay. Mm -hmm. So just... Some bay. Some bay. I love that. I'm so... <laughs> <laughs> bay, bay leaves, get Absolutely. it, whatever. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> And um, <laughs> some garlic. Oh, you cannot miss out on garlic in your stews, right? Ever. Okay. So what I've got now is some um, canned tomatoes that have been chopped and, up. And you add, you, add it, you add it later so that it doesn't burn, right? Because it you, gets bitter. If absolutely. You, if it too long. Okay. So that goes in with a little bit of wine. What you can do is you can leave the wine out if you want. Do you need me okay, to pass you anything leave else? Leave the wine. Pass to me. And the stock. So a little wine goes in. Uh -huh. What you want to do is you want to cook that wine flavor out. Remove that like harsh alcohol flavor in there. Mm -hmm. This can be a method. But remember, we cooking all the alcohol out, so there's not going to be any alcohol in this dish. Cool. So I'm going to let this reduce slightly, and then I'm going to top it up with some stuff. Okay. Then it's going to go to the oven for an hour and a half. We can be patient. We can do other things, we right? We can do other things. But when we come back, time. exactly. When we come back, <laughs> it's going to be so intense. It's going to be so good. It's basically winter sorted. Wow, Done. it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. And I hope you're cooking along with us at home. Pop over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and shopping list. Back to the couch with Jeannie with our next guest. Thank you, Bonnie, and I'm so impressed with your cooking. That's going to be one very delicious dish. Now, photographer and filmmaker Tsaku Mayela, who also lives with manic depression and anxiety, has visually interpreted the different stages of depression in a photo series called Abstract Pieces. Now, the series aims to challenge the stigma about mental illnesses in the black community, and we are joined now by Tsoku Mayela. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's a so to be lovely here. to have you on my couch. Awesome. <laughs> now, I, I was doing a bit of research on you and I saw on your, your, social, media, uh, um, your social media bio, you said, I'm not an artist, 
Um, I don't pretend to be, don't understand art, I just am who I am. Take me a bit uh, through that, that statement. It's actually funny that you asked me that because on my way here, the driver was, saw me put my work into the boot and he's like, are you an artist? I was like, <laughs> no, well, I'm just a guy with a camera and some crazy ideas. Yeah. I don't really understand art. So he pauses for like five minutes, gets into the car, gets his seatbelt on, puts on the rear view mirror and goes like, well, you're an artist then, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, I guess just I to put you at ease, <laughs> nobody actually understands art. I don't understand <laughs> it. So, I, I mean, for me personally, it's, it's not that I don't understand art. It's because I think I have so much respect for artists that actually make artistic bodies of work that I don't think I'm at that level yet to call myself an artist. So I'm still wow. exploring my ideas and I'm taking photos and I'm creating whatever I can. But until that point where I feel like I'm actually making good art, I'll call myself an artist. Well, that's incredibly humble of you because I've had a look at some of your pieces and I think that you are a great artist. <laughs> I appreciate that so much. <laughs> So now you were diagnosed with with uh, mental disease. I mean, you were diagnosed with manic depression mm -hmm. and anxiety. For those of us that don't know, what is it exactly, and what is it like to live with manic depression? I think a lot of us, go, I mean, all of us go go through some highs and lows in our yeah. lives. But like manic depression is mostly uh, diagnosed between two high states, which is the mania highs, where you feel egotistical, full of energy, but like quite impulsive as well, okay. where you can make like reckless decisions and the, the lows are usually the depressive modes where you feel very sad you, you don't feel like doing anything you don't want to go out you don't have the energy to do anything so it's really a contrast between those two moods which happen so severely like at, at, at a constant rate it changes whenever really? wherever so yeah that's really impacted my life in a positive and a negative way slightly negative sure. because so many friendships and relationships along the way have been ruined but positively because on the journey of self-discovery i've had to ask myself how my mind works as opposed to looking at uh, bipolar based off the book what the symptoms are but what does it yeah. mean for me as a person the way my mind works because at the end of the day i have to deal with that exactly so that's how all the artists come along me finding my way through that has helped me interpret it in exactly. a visual way Exactly. Now, I just want to get to get a better understanding. Is it a daily thing that you live with, with where like within a few minutes you can be the happiest guy in the world and then literally just deeply sad? It varies from person to person. Yeah. Usually for, for me, it's, it goes on for like a week or two or three. That's, that's why it's diagnosed as a mental illness because okay. it, it stays on for a while. But for yeah. some people, it could be a daily thing. It could be the spur of the moment. For example, somebody who's going through a, a manic episode could start rambling and yeah. start speaking about five topics in two sentences, you know, because they're going through so many thoughts. Yeah. So it really does vary from person to person. But for me personally, it takes a long period. Like I'll go through a depressive state for the longest time, which is how I'm able to create a different piece after a very sure. long period of time. Yeah. Apparently, I mean, I think that it's, it's huge, mental illness is hugely misunderstood because I think the mind has just got so much to it that for people to, to fathom exactly what's going on is really pretty hard. Yeah. So I'm want to understand for you what was it like growing up especially apparently in black communities it's even worse with people not understanding what it is so what was like that was what was it like in your family and in your community well I was very fortunate to grow up in a, in a very liberal family you know my mother Amazing. was a teacher and my sisters had traveled the world to see other places and understand so for me as a child it was, it was more me being an eccentric child being like a naughty child that burns things and runs around but my mother never looked at it as like mental illness or anyway yeah. you know it was just a normal childhood I think I only discovered later in my life pre teen 17 18 when I was actually diagnosed that I might have something you know I might, I might I might be dealing with something that has an actual name you know it's yeah. manic depression so my childhood was generally very okay very quiet just me being a naughty child yeah. uh, high school was great you know made a few friends here and there but I did struggle a lot with uh, social anxiety where I didn't even go to my metric dance because I was very like very anxious of spaces with people so I was like no I'm not gonna go there I'm not gonna go yeah. there people are like you missed out I was like I know that's so unfortunate because you know? meeting you you are such a <laughs> lovable person I appreciate that like, so I hope you I hope you do get to enjoy that element of yourself thank you <laughs> yeah now I want to chat about your art because sure. I think your pieces are so powerful and they're very captiv uh, captivating so basically you used your mental illness as a narrative behind this collection is this a, a are these pieces out of Broken Things? Yeah, they, uh, these are from abstract pieces. Uh, broken Things deals with something else completely. Okay. And what a lot of people don't understand about abstract pieces is that I did not plan to make the series. Okay, you so know? how did what happened? How did it start? Well, I mean, for me, it started like uh, after I left, uh, I was actually in hospital for like five days having like a recurring chest illness, which also happens when you go through the many highs. It's like you start having a lot of heart problems. So they started okay. looking into what could have possibly gone wrong but they couldn't tell me after a week so when I left there I was broke you know I had nothing I was just alone and when I got home I picked up my camera and I took my first image and I placed it I, I shared it on the internet and people went like oh it's great 
do yeah. more, you know? Yeah. And then uh, I just started documenting my day to day. Every single time I felt low or high, I just took a photo. For me, it was a coping mechanism. For me, it was a release because I'm not on, medica on medication or self-medicating. So for yeah. me, I needed to find a way to escape that other reality that I'm wow. dealing with. So this is how all the images came along and also inspired by my dreams and like really my spiritual growth as well. So the images came out the way they did and eventually it came into a body of work which surprised me at the end because even the the diary entries just worked perfectly as chapter, mar chapter markers. If you follow it completely, you'll know exactly how I felt at that time. Wow. That is, they really are so powerful. All of your details on your coming exhibition are going to be on our website. And I really, really hope to, and I look forward to seeing more of your work. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to chat to you a little bit later as well. Now, today we are actually giving away one of Tsokumayela's creations titled The Three, Mind, Body and Spirit, to one very lucky viewer. Simply SMS the keyword express your name and city to 33728 right now and stand a chance to win. SMSs cost one round fifty each, T's and C's apply, and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za and if you win you are one very very lucky person because wow i'm so blown away by your story and, you so and by your work thank you so much for coming Appreciate through that. over to you bonnie that that will be definitely one lucky winner i wish i could be a winner but that's such a powerful and inspiring story and work after the break i chat about colds and flus with dr shamendran don't go away we'll be right back Welcome to the Fresh Pack Natural Goodness Series. Now, when it comes to our health, we all need the reassurance that we're making the right choices for ourselves and for our families. Fortunately, with the natural goodness of Fresh Pack, you can rest assured that your everyday health is in good hands. In cold weather, we all want to snuggle up indoors, eating and drinking comfort foods, but this is the time that we should be mindful of our well-being, as our immune systems are more vulnerable and our bodies have to work harder to stay healthy. Joining us today to help with just that is medical practitioner Dr. Shamendran Naidu. Welcome back, Dr. Shamendran. Thank you very much. Lovely to have you back with us. Yeah. So why is it that we're more susceptible to colds and flus in winter? I mean, I, I always thought it was an old wives' tale that when you get too cold, you get sick. Well, that's not entirely true, no. Yeah. The thing is, during the winter months, the air is a lot more dry than during the summer months. And now the dryness in the air actually dries out the mucous membranes, the inner lining of your nose, your mouth, your eyes, and you can kind of feel it during winter. Mm. Now, that inner lining actually plays a very important protective role in your body. It ah. keeps all those viruses out from the, from the inside. The other, the other factor that actually contributes to it is the fact that during the winter months and with the drop in temperature, a lot of the viruses increase in numbers. Right. It doesn't help that during winter months we're not outside and we're all packed together in the house around the heater, you know, making it a lot Which easier. Which creates a better breed breeding ground. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And how do we keep from passing it on to the other members of the family? You know, when we're all around that heater, it makes it a lot difficult, a lot more difficult. But the important thing is to make sure that you're doing good hygiene. So whenever you're preparing food at home, to wash your hands, not be scratching your eyes, uh, or washing your hands before if you need to get something out. Yeah. And uh, if you're touching your nose, your mouth, then just make sure that you're washing your yeah. hands profusely. Yes. Now, most people get through their colds and flus using over-the-counter medication and others run to the doctor at the sign of the first sniffle. Yeah. How do you know when it's time to go to the doctor? Look, I've seen a lot of the two, the, 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 the two stages where patients... I'm the counter girl. Oh, like, are you? I just never go are to you? the doctor. Okay. <laughs> well, that can also be bad, and that's why I'm going to tell yeah. you, because some patients go so long without coming to the doctor. Mm. And when you see them, they're really... In re they're, they're really... In, in a bad way. They're in the terminal stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, do, I always say, look, why don't you come close? Why don't you come sooner? Yeah. Now, generally, you can treat it with over-the-counter medication, good hydration, nutrition, and make sure that you're resting. However, in patients who have extremely high temperatures, which just refuse to respond to medication, as well as kids, kids who do not respond well to over-the-counter medication, specifically the temperature, it's very important to bring yeah, them through. Yeah, yeah. And now we're often told to up our fluid intake during yes. winter. Why is it important to stay hydrated? You could probably guess that from what I said. Mm -hmm. With the winter season bringing a lot more dryness, it's yeah. important to replace that dryness with some kind of fluid. I actually love recommending rooibos to patients because rooibos isn't just water. It's got your added iron, it's got magnesium, potassium, mm. it's got all those trace elements 
as well as being naturally sweet, it's free of caffeine, so it's stimulant yeah. free, safe in babies, safe in children, safe in everybody. It's so amazing. What fluids should we avoid? Well, uh, not to be pointing any fingers at all those caffeinated beverages, it's so important to avoid caffeine, to avoid unnecessary preservatives, flavorants, and artificial uh, ingredients. Yeah, I'm probably going to need more help avoiding caffeine than I am with curing a cold or a flu. <laughs> <laughs> so I use my voice a lot in my line of work, and then I find at the end of the day in winter I have a sore throat more often than not. How can I treat it? That's totally understandable because you're probably not hydrating in between scenes uh, and shoots. I love, I'm going to say it again, yeah. I absolutely love rooibos. I think it's a lovely way to just keep hydrated and you're getting all those added, added minerals and vitamins. Yeah, so I can never overdo it, basically. Well, well, I'm quite sure that you wouldn't be because you'll have to run off to the next shoot. Right. And are there any specific rooibos flavors that are specifically good for fighting colds and flus? The, the nice thing about winter is, you know, when you have a cold and flu, you're obviously feeling for just that little something. Fresh Pack has a range of flavors from honey, lemon, watermelon and mint pomegranate and cranberry, so anything you feel like. Yeah, and I can pop some ginger in there. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much, Dr. Schmidt. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> and of course, Fresh Pack Rooibos is all about choosing the healthy way with so many delicious flavored options to choose from like honey, lemon, watermelon and mint and cranberry and pomegranate. It's so easy to enjoy all the beneficial antioxidants, no caffeine and of course the natural goodness of Fresh Pack Rooibos. And it's delicious served hot or cold. Until next week, keep yourself and your family happy, healthy and enjoying life with the natural goodness of fresh pack rooibos. Thanks, Bonnie and Shamindran. Now, today we are giving away a hamper containing a selection of fresh pack teas. To stand a chance of winning, simply SMS the keyword fresh pack, your name and city to 33728 right now. SMSs cost one rand fifty each, teas and teas apply, and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. After the break, it's time for win a home on Afternoon Express, so don't move, you could be winning a home. <laughs> Follow three talented young designers as they transform three empty apartments on Voldevi Estate into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesarstone and Plascon. Cast your vote on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance to win one of the completed apartments worth more than 3 million rand. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, when it comes to bespoke wooden kitchens, cabinetry, staircases, flooring and decks, Wood Lab is standing in front of the line with their outstanding craftsmanship. Now, they were also responsible for creating and installing our very own Afternoon Express kitchen and have also been involved with Winner Home. We have Dominic Kirko here from Wood Lab with us in the loft. Welcome. Hi. Wood Lab sounds like such an amazing business because it's, I mean, some of the work that you've done is just so tremendous unique and outstanding. So how did it all start for you? Well, Woodlap started as a, an idea, you know, we, we were, well, I was very frustrated, you know, going from site to site, seeing the same kitchens, the same cabinetry all over the place, and I just, I wanted to do something different. I, you know, our focus is really on, you know, customer service. We're quite customer centric, and uh, our design is quite eclectic, you know, it's a little bit different to the, you know, the glossy, kind of duco spread kitchens you see yeah. all, ar all around, you know, so, yeah. you know, it's quite different and uh, we, we love timber, you know, our passion is timber and we, we love the use of timber in everything, so yeah, that's where, really where it started, I guess. That's so awesome. Yeah. And I think that you must be doing very well because I think a lot of people know if you've ever, ever renovated a home, when it comes to customer service, I mean, it's, it's, oh. uh, I've renovated a few times and it's an absolute nightmare. Yeah, I don't know if I'll take it on. It, it is it's hard work. I mean, we've, uh, you know, we've, we've experienced this time and time again. I mean, you know, every single job we've been on, you know, you know, there's always some kind of drama. We try to limit that to some yes. degree and we, we again, customer centric. Yeah. We try to calm the customer down and we, we deliver all the time. Yeah. Now, the kitchen is really the heart of the home. I mean, I'm, I don't even cook. And when I was renovating, I'm frantic about my kitchen. And I spend so much time in it. I love kitchens. So are there any like, latest trends? What should people be looking out for in terms of the in-kitchen at the moment? Well, uh, there's definitely a move towards 
you know, a more organic kind of feel in the kitchen, you know, it's kind of bringing the outside inside. So we, we uh, obviously the use of timber, you know, we love timber. Mm. So we, we try to emphasize, you know, all the timber that we, we use. A lot of, uh, at the moment, uh, the use of textured surfaces, you know, so sandblasted timbers, um, I, I guess less manicured kitchens, you know, yeah. more, uh, you know, highly textured surfaces, like, you know, even the use of two-tone uh, timbers, you know, so you know, back in the day, it was, you know, just using, you know, oak, or, uh, or one type of wood, and now, yeah. now you know we're really mixing it up a bit. You know, two tone like the kitchen we did here is uh, you know dark and light. So we we try and mix it up like that. I think we on trend in terms of that. You know, uh, work surfaces also very thin profiles. You know, yeah. back you know a few years ago it was you know all fat big you know surface monolithic blocks. You know now yeah. it's all about thin profiles. You know. So the, we use a lot of shadow detailing in our works uh, and you know, it, it, it definitely shows it. It accentuates the timber, it accentu accentuates the, the work surfaces we use because you, you create shadows wherever you work. You know? and, uh, I think that's definitely on trend, you know, so, yeah. yeah. Well, something that I absolutely love about our Afternoon Express kitchen as well is that it's got such a clever use of space. Everything is kind of along one wall mm. and it's not very invasive. It kind yeah. of looks very elegant. So tell us a bit about our well, gorgeous kitchen. Well, we wanted to use, you know, especially for the island here, we, we, we thought of using, you know, accentuating the island, you know, creating that shadow detailing on the edge of the profile mm. and having sleek legs. Um, and it's quite long, you know, so we wanted to, you know, make use of the, you know, have, have a section of the island where, where there's timber and use, uh, using Caesar stone on the rest of the island. It works really well because we've got the panelling on, um, on, the, on the inset of the, of the island on the front. And um, definitely on that island, all you see is it floating off the ground. It's got a very sleek kind of yeah. look about it, you know. That's a great kitchen yeah. to spend time in. Yeah. You also did our kitchen um, for the Decorex stand. Yes. And you're now working with um, some of our contestants yes. at Val de Vie yeah. for, yes. for Winner Home. Absolutely. We, we, we did the Decorex stand and we drew a lot of inspiration from the Decorex stand to do the kitchen at, at Val de Vie. Yeah. And um, we definitely, uh, uh, I think it's a really unique kitchen because a lot of the other kitchens there are quite white and you know, neutral palettes, but we yeah. wanted to play off the two-tone aspect and have, uh, you know, the, as you know, the floors are, are, are light. So mm. we wanted a darker kitchen and uh, the, you know, the tops are, are white. So everything's playing off, off, off them. You know, each material is playing off one another. Um, the use of uh, the, the new 13 mil Caesar stone on the tops are, yeah. are really unique. And I think that, <gasps> um, that. yeah, definitely, it's, uh, it's definitely unique. Because we've got, uh, as you can see on the work surface, we've got a, a copper detailing on the inside of the, shadow, the I shadows. I need copper in my kitchen. Yeah, copper's everywhere at the moment. It's very, yes. I'm actually, very much on trend at the moment. As you're speaking, I'm thinking, brass. what are you doing later? You're going to have to come <laughs> and fix my kitchen. Oh, we'll come, we'll come. No, 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 no problem there. Yeah. You've just inspired me to want to renovate again after saying I'm never <laughs> well, going to renovate. You're in good hands. So. <laughs> okay, I'm definitely giving you a call. I'm getting a new kitchen. Now, if you want to see some more of Woodlab's beautiful work, visit them on woodlab.co.za for more information and how you can get in touch. Now, kitchens also rely on hidden, high-quality engineering to make the whole experience of the kitchen comfortable and practical. So for your kitchen to be as functional, I suppose, as possible, uh, you would like it, uh, well, functional as you would like it, it requires the correct hardware. So we asked Juan Hugo from Grass about space-saving solutions and the latest international trends. Most people only spend time on the exterior of the kitchen. Um, they worry what the doors and the drawers and the tops look like, but they neglect the most important part, uh, which is the hardware. And that's where our drawer uh, and inch systems come in. It offers uh, optimal comfort when opening and closing drawers. While the kitchen is the most expensive room in the house, I think it's very important that people look into what hardware is being used in the kitchen. Monetli and Wayne has gone for the push open drawer system in a crisp white colour. With a push open drawer system it enables a very clean look from the outside. You see no handles and your, your gaps and spaces in between the drawers are very small. So that gives a very clean modern look. For a 
Real from Beth, we've incorporated our latest draw system from Germany, the Vionara draw system. It's got a 12mm wall thickness, so it gives you optimal packing space inside your draw. It's also based on the latest colour trends from Europe, which is your shades of grey, your light greys and your dark greys. So what Beth has also done is incorporate the colours of the tops and doors and, and draw fronts to go with our Vionara sides. Janet and Dominique have gone with a more traditional wooden box drawers with a undermount system. It's not as modern, but it gives you a more timeless kitchen, more warmth. The runners that they've used is a 40 kilogram weight capacity system. So with those drawers, you can use a very wide drawer, which gives you optimal packing space inside the drawer. The old way of having cupboards with doors is sort of something of the past and people are using drawers more and more because everything that you have in a drawer comes out and you've got the top view of everything. So making a really big wide drawer is the current trend when it comes to the hardware. Some smart space saving solutions for you to use at home is internal drawers. So that means you've got a drawer behind the door or another drawer. So you're using your optimal backing space in your cupboard. Another option to use is also a spice pull-out, either in a 150 or 300. They're normally tiered, so it gives you enough backing space for your spices, your olive oil bottles and, and so forth. Corners are often underutilized in the kitchen, so for that we would recommend a what they call a lazy Susan and then also a blind corner pull-out. Soft close drawer and door options is a must have in the kitchen these days. It gives optimal comfort, silent opening and closing of drawers. The other advantage is also our push open systems. It gives the designers a bit more freedom when it comes to design. It reduces clutter in the kitchen and takes away the, the bulky handles. And then in, in turn it gives the kitchen a very sleek and modern look. I cannot wait to see how those kitchens turn out. Remember, we are showing them on the final, final kitchens. We show it on the show on Friday. Now it's time for our weekly private property chat. Mm -hmm. And we have two wonderful property consultants, uh, consultants from Jarvis Properties. Uh, and we've got Shanae Shipper and H Ingrid Halton, specialising in Constantia and Bishop's Court in Cape Town, mm -hmm. to take us through a stunning property located in Constantia. I'm definitely yeah, going to live in Bishop's Court yeah. one day, I've decided. <laughs> I need to. I feel like my soul would be really happy you will, there. You will <laughs> Welcome, ladies. Great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for having so, us. So, this is a very exciting property. It's exquisite. But let's first talk about where it's situated. Why is Constantia such a great place to live? You're right. It is an exceptional property. It's actually spread over three levels and wow. it's on an acre of land. Wow. And most of the properties around that home in that area are all around about 4,000 square meters of land. Wow. Leafy so Constantia. Leafy Constantia, oh. exactly. <laughs> yes. And you mentioned the neighborhood. It's, it's a very quiet neighborhood. And this particular home is situated at the end of a cul-de-sac, slightly raised. So as you drive up this cul-de-sac, you can just imagine how glorious it looks at the end, wow. yeah. standing very proud. But it's quiet. It's very green and private, and it's a very safe area. Yeah. So these are all really important issues. And as a mom, I'd first ask, like, what, what schools are around there? What amazing schools can be found there? <gasps> the best <laughs> ones. <laughs> <laughs> They're fantastic schools. Most of them are private schools. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the draw cards of Constantia, because the commute to the schools is very possible. Yeah. And because Constantia is also a very community aware area, we find families actually seek Constantia out mm. as a place to stay mm. yeah. because they know that there is such a strong community spirit. Yeah. But just going back to the area and the um, neighborhood, this particular house has a fantastically famous neighbor. Who? Oh. And that neighbor is Groot Constantia Wine Farm. Oh, wow. wow. Sold. Have you ever? <laughs> sure. So two doors down, you're right at the wine farm. So that's, that's really amazing. spectacular. That might be a bit dangerous for me because yeah. <laughs> I'll never be at home. I'll be yeah. visiting the neighbours every five minutes. Okay, I want to see the home. Yeah. What does the home look like? Describe it for us. 
Well, we're going to do that a little bit later, if that's possible. Sure. Um, because I think that there's some pictures coming up of the various parts of the home. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I can tell you a little bit more about Constantia in the meantime. Okay, great. Because we, we touched on the wine farms, and that's one of the reasons that Constantia is so unique is because we have so many fabulous wine farms that we even have our own wine route. Wow, yeah. you, there's a wine a route in Constantia? Oh, wow. wine, wine route. route. Have, and because of all the wine farms, you can imagine we also have fantastic restaurants. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yes. And so let's get to the house because we're yes. going to have a look at it now. So tell us about the, a bit about the house. Apparently this, it's just amazing. This kitchen is definitely the heart of this home and definitely one of my favourite places. That table over there is just perfect because it's geared for a big family. Yeah. So a big table, eight-seater, you see the very big gas stove. And that also leads one, that the handle you're seeing there is to a walk-in refrigerator wow. room. Stunning. Wow. So any gourmet chef would be happy yes, with that room. Yes, a chef's dream, yeah. Yes, exactly. quite. Well, that's very important. It's one of the bedrooms. Yeah. I believe that the bedroom is one of the most important rooms of the home. Mm -hmm. And the master suite is so luxurious. It's got a beautiful study and it's got a lounge area all opening onto a sun-filled patio with beautiful vistas. And oh, they didn't, it also just went past that it's got a beautiful bathroom mm -hmm. and a fitted kitchen, uh, dressing room. Lovely. What yeah. stands out for you the most about this home? Oh, for me, what stands out about this home is the dramatic architecture. It's elegant and it's classical. It's got high ceilings, crystal chandeliers, oh, wow. and a beautiful gleaming wooden staircase. Yeah, that's As you can stunning. see, it's got beautiful gardens. The garden is level and it's perfect for children, making it the oh, ideal family it's, home. It's superb for children. Ingrid, there's a fantastic uh, pool area yes. as well. So many I'm mad about the entertainment area. Right. Yeah. I think this family is so spoiled for choice. It's unreal <laughs> because they've got these tall stack back doors that open up, you know, the glass doors. Yeah. And that just opens the interior to the exterior seamlessly. Wow. So you have this huge expanse. It's really fabulous. And mm. on top of that, the patio leads onto a decked pool. And then, as Shawnee was saying, the garden which is perfect for kids because it's beautifully level. Yeah. yeah. But they've also got a gym room. Oh, wow. Yeah. Also got wow. a sauna. Tough oh, life. I mean, so, <laughs> I've already bought this house ages ago yeah. before I even yeah. saw it. And, it and a typical man cave. Love. Mm. Well, we don't really need Beautiful that. Beautiful man cave. <laughs> a wine cellar to go with a man cave. Because right. you need a wine Thank cellar you so to go with a man cave. <laughs> and on top of that, it's a piece de resistance, a completely fitted, Theatre, home theatre room. Oh, oh amazing. Wow. And that's yeah. stunning. You could ask for more. <laughs> yes. this, amazing. this home is a nine bedroom home. Oh, wow. Perfect. And sure. it also presents with b, &B potential. <laughs> you so can fantastic. find this property and many more in the neighbourhood that fits your needs on privateproperty.co.za. And there are only four weeks remaining in the Winner Home Grand Prize competition mm -hmm. in which you, the viewer, could win your choice of one of the three glamorous apartments on Velda V Lifestyle, finished by our design contestants. So vote now for your yeah. favourite. Vote for your favourite design contestant's kitchen on privateproperty.co.za and stand a chance of winning a tulip dining chair by guideline to the value of 6,890 Rand. You also automatically get entered into the draw to win one of the three finished apartments valued at over 3 million Rand. Win a Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Welcome back to the Afternoon Express. Lovely to have you back with us. We're into the second part of our lamb dish. I'm so excited. I know, because we, we done kind of, well, actually, no. Talk about the rice and beans now, right? Right, right. So I'm happy as long as I have rice in the house. I'm sorted, right? There's always a meal as long as you have rice mm -hmm, in the house. Mm -hmm, but people mm -hmm. cook it so wrong. Do they? They do. Okay, really. tell us how to cook it It's so right. simple. So you start with cold water. You can either soak your rice. Cold water. Cold always water. cold water. Always. I've, I'm, I've already been messing it up. <laughs> already. So you, can, you can either soak your rice and wash it to get some of the excess starch out. Okay. I don't worry. What's wrong with starch? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> rice goes in and then um, rice loves salt. Right? Oh, wow. is so that truffle salt? salt? Or what kind of this special is, salt this is, is that? This it's is so pink fancy. Himalayan. It's pink Himalayan because we are a little fancy with a little bit of black yeah. pepper in yeah. there. Yeah, okay. And then you bring it up to a boil, right? As mm -hmm. soon as it comes up to a boil, reduce the heat to low, pop the lid on, 
20 minutes later, you're good to go. But here's the trick. Take a dishcloth, put it over your pot, and then yeah. put the lid on. That absorbs some of the excess moisture. Okay. You get super fluffy rice. Like you see in the adverts, when it just into... So when I was younger, right, and I'm sure some of you will relate at home, my mom used to rinse the rice. Like That's halfway through the cooking, she'd like put it in a sieve and then like rinse all the starch out. Is that like... No, I don't know what about that. What was that about? But I think that also just to like remove some of that excess starch. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that's a bad thing. I, that was just like, for me, the worst part of cooking the rice. So I hated cooking <laughs> yeah. rice at home. It can be tricky, but I mean, if you follow those steps, you should be really good. Okay, cool. Cool. So what I've got is the rice is already cooked. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to add some spring onions to it. Mm -hmm. Because I love spring onions, I put it in everything. Yeah, okay. And then black beans because they're black also so beans. delicious. Yeah. Okay, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pop this onto our serving platter. Mm -hmm. You get it all on there. Oops. Wow, that I love the colours. It looks so pretty. I know, so cool. That goes on there, and then our beautiful, beautiful stew. Oh, that's stew. That goes on there. It's gonna go straight on. <laughs> that is a good-looking stew, man. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let me just okay. do this. The Let show is almost like over. That. There we go. There pressure's go. on. Pressure's on. Our guests are waiting. <laughs> there we go. Cool. I'll take this. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. Bring it. <laughs> Ta-da! Yay! Dinner is served. Look at you guys handling the pressure. Right? It is. Look at that. Oh. It's a feast. Clem, it smells incredible. You are like my little secret weapon in the kitchen. <laughs> Don't you want to come and live with me in that house in Constantia? <laughs> Sounds good. So we're very excited because tomorrow we debut in our new time slot of 5 p.m. and we have international R&B legend Tevin Campbell here. I cannot wait. Now head over to our Twitter at Afternoon Chat and our Facebook page and check out our awesome competition. If you send us a video of yourself singing along to your favorite Tevin Campbell classic, yeah. you can win tickets to his show. The winner will be chosen by Tevin Campbell personally. Yeah, and in case you don't know how to rock it, Danilo and Clem have already recorded their own version, so go check it out <laughs> on our social media feed. <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much to our incredible guests. You are amazing, and I cannot wait to see more of your work. Thank you so I'm much. just completely obsessed with you. Thank you. Yeah, All right. goodbye. Otherwise, Thank we'll you so be back much again for joining tomorrow. us. We'll see Bye. you again tomorrow. Have, have a lovely eating. evening. Happy eating. <laughs> <laughs> now it's really easy. Because... Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express in our brand new time slot, American singer and songwriter Tevin Campbell joins us in the loft during his tour of South Africa and he treats us to a magical live performance. The hottest address on TV is Winner Home on Afternoon Express. Proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with Nedbank. Another feel-good production.